Welcome to the day one at the Wizen House Resort. This is the first day of the tournament, and look at the weather. It's snowing already. Hi everyone, this is Sagar Shah, and we are at the first day of the freestyle chess tournament. And look at what the weather is like here. It's snowing, and it's snowing heavily here. It's amazing. Uh, we have the two cars there for the players. It seems they are in the restaurants and having their breakfast on the left. And that barn, which is not even 200 meters away, is the playing venue. But you know, it's so tough uh, to walk in this snowy weather. Also, you have to be careful when you're walking on the street not to slip. So. You have the BMWs here waiting for the players. It was not at all easy to walk to the tournament hall, but it was so nearby. Look at the environment here. Earlier in the day, a press conference was held with Magnus, Vincent Keimer, the organizer and sponsor of the event, Jan Buechner, and also the tournament director on the left, Sebastian Siebricht. They spoke about the vision of freestyle chess and what they wanted to do with this tournament. I then went to the playing hall for the round. It was about to begin. In front of me is Nodirbek Abdusatro who is walking backwards just so as to avoid the snow being hit on his face. We entered the tournament hall and once you enter into the premises, the temperature is completely under control and it's amazing. Gukesh made his entry into the playing venue and so did the world champion Ding Le Ren who is here with his mother behind him. The security personnel tell his mother to switch off the phone and she would do that. Entering into the tournament area, we see all the players waiting for the first round to begin. We have Fiona Steele Anthony who's here and she's the host. And all the players were waiting for the position to be brought up so that they could prepare for the game and get going. In the studio running the live broadcast. So if I say thank you, Tanya and Peter. I'm not talking to any of you, I'm talking to the camera right behind you because the next thing that is going to happen is the drawing of lots. I'm very excited for this. I'm now counting six players, seven players. So there is one player missing. Ali Reza. Ali Reza is missing, I'm sure. Ali Reza will be here uh, in a second. That was a beautifully made video and then to do the draw of lots as to which number position out of the 960 positions would be played in round one, we had Holly, the wife of the main organizer and sponsor Jan Buettner and also Miss Angola International who came to do the honors. As you can see here, Holly does the job of pulling this machine a specially made machine so that all the balls enter into the bowl this is specially made for this event where 960 balls are held and then Teresa Sara picks up one of the balls which will be the position number once the ball is picked up the position is announced. You can see that all the players are waiting in anticipation as to what the number it would be. And there we have it. The number is announced and within 
few seconds the position is there in the backdrop you can see now the players can start thinking about it the bishop is on the side there are two knights there's a rook on the other side and so on so while the players are thinking about the position there's a very novel concept that is added here where the players with white pieces in four games can actually go and analyze together while the players with four who are having black pieces can analyze together so there we see all the players bunching up and this actually has only 10 minutes before the game begins so here we see Magnus and Gukesh, there's a very nice scene where Magnus asks Gukesh to sit down and Gukesh says, no, you please sit down. And then Magnus takes the chair and Levon, Magnus and Gukesh start to analyze. You can see Levon making the moves initially and they just get a feel of what is happening. All these players will be having white position in game one. And so with this, they are able to just gauge as to what their first move should be and what are the patterns in the position. Here you can see every player has a room of their own. This is Ding Liren's room and he has some fruits, cookies and you know as always very simple. Um, and on the other end you will see that the players who are discussing have the black pieces. Here we have Nodirbek Abdu Satarov, Fabiano Caruana and Vincent Keimer who are analyzing with the black pieces. Ali Reza Firuja is the one who is not analyzing with anyone. He's actually uh, relaxed and he's talking with the man who's made all of these suits. His suit also arrives. Uh, he had forgotten it and the suit is here. Meanwhile, players analyze all different kinds of stuff you can see here. Karuana talking about h4 and then he says h5 is it needed if not the h pawn can move forward and so you know there's a lot of creativity that goes into these players it's not that typical 20-30 uh, moves of theory right from move one there is scope for creative creativity that can happen Ding Liren uh, sits alone uh, he was not analyzing with anyone and here you can see both the players in their jackets, red for Gukesh, orange for Ali Reza and those colors are also shown below the board. One of the things that has to be done is to put back these balls again the 960 of them, uh, well reduce one of them uh, because the ball one ball has already been selected and that is done by Holly and uh, it's such a wonderful pair of the sponsors and organizers Yan and Holly they both support each other and make this event a possibility for the world of chess. Miss Angola International Teresa got the chance to talk um, with Magnus so and Magnus the, sent her a message. In round number one, we had Ali Reza beating Gukesh, two draws, and Ding Liren losing to Fabiano Caruana. These were the decisive, two decisive results and two draws. The second round began once again with the draw of lots done in this very unique way and as the balls rolled down into the bowl we had Teresa picking up a ball and this time the new position that was shown on the screen was this one. The players got up from their chair and uh, sometimes you know some players get double white or double black so the groups are broken up it's not always the same players analyzing with each other uh, here you can see vincent and abdu satarov analyzing and ding liren was watching the analysis uh, from a distance he could have joined them uh, but he preferred to just watch what the analysis was happening 
Here we see Vincent Keimer taking off his jacket and just to show how little things are taken care of in this tournament there is a jacket holder near uh, every board where they can put their specially tailor made jackets this was the position in the second round and most of the players castled in the first couple of moves itself the big news of round number 2 was 17 year old kukesh After losing his first round, he got the better of Magnus Carlsen. There you see Magnus was under pressure in the game and Gukesh's focus was immaculate. He just kept all his focus on the game, never letting his guard down and in the end he managed to triumph against the great Magnus Carlsen, which is one of the biggest victories for Gukesh in his career. After the game ended, the pieces were set up. Magnus left the board. Gukesh, in his typical style, paid his respect to the board, and then Magnus went into his uh, resting area, which was here. And Gukesh, feeling good there, but the boy is never ever over excited. Three decisive results: Nodirbek beat Ding, Vincent beat Levon, and Gukesh beat Carlson. Firuja and Karuana ended in a draw. We move on to round number three, and in this round, Ding Liren once again sitting alone. Before his round, he was facing Vincent Kaimer, and Ding had already lost both his first two rounds, so he needed a win. On the back side you see magnus levon and fabiano analyzing this is just amazing to see three legends of the game analyzing together here and on the other end we had three youngsters who were analyzing together it's also a beautiful scene they will become the future champions of the game we have nodirbek vincent and uh, gukesh analyzing alireza firuja doesn't really join in the analysis the round turned to be a very good one for the youngsters gukesh got the better of levon vincent beat ding liren and firoja drew against carlson while nodirbek also drew against karuana you see with the next round about to begin the last one the players put the pieces just making sure that they have the right position on the board and uh, there you see gukesh just ensuring so that they don't waste time if they have set up the wrong position gukesh and vincent started to analyze and then they were joined in by magnus carlson because magnus also had white now what is interesting to note here is that gukesh really wanted to play c4 meanwhile vincent was of the opinion that d4 might be a better move this conversation really made me start to think that the players all have different styles even if they are very very strong there you see gukesh analyzing the d4 move and then once again when the position was put back he analyzed c4 the english opening that was played and <laughs> vincent started analyzing d4 so in these 10 minutes they had many back and forth and magnus started suggesting very weird moves like c4 b5 and magnus said why don't you start with g3 you can then maybe go d4 if needed you can go c4 why not keep flexibility you know seeing magnus there made me uh, sort of feel that this guy is filled with so many ideas there you see him pushing the pawn two squares to g4 then suddenly now saying that hey why why should we go here why not a5 you know so all the time he was coming up with different solutions uh, even if they were not that great in the end all three players went to their boards because they had the analysis done it was roughly 10 minutes gukesh shook hands with ding liren the world champion this was going to be a big clash gukesh was on a high because he had already beaten carlson then aronian and now was facing ding and as the game began they shook hands what was very interesting for me to see is what move will gukesh choose of course he played c4 
and then I went over to the board of Vincent to see what he chose. He played d4. <laughs> so Gukesh went c4, Vincent went d4 and I was keen to see what did Magnus choose and Magnus actually went d4 as well. He played this c3 d4 setup. Gukesh went on to win his game against Ding Liren, which was quite a big win for Gukesh. He ended the day with 3 out of 4, uh, getting the second position. Meanwhile, Vincent Keimer won his game as well, moved to 3 and half out of 4. Gukesh went inside his room uh, and maybe picked up something to eat? Maybe. And then I had an interview with Gukesh, which is on our channel. You can check it out. Gukesh talks about his wins. And those were the results of the last round. Vincent beating Karuana. Firuja losing to Nodir Beck. Gukesh getting the better of Ting. And Magnus scoring his first win of the tournament. These are the standings after the first day. We have Vincent on 3.5, Gukesh on 3, Abdu Sattaro on 3. Firuja on 2, Magnus on 2, Karuan on 2 and Ding yet to open his account with 0 while Levon is on half a point. As the day ended, I made a recap video, a sort of not a recap video but a venue tour of the place along with Amruta. There you can see the beautiful playing hall divided into two parts, two boards on one side, two boards on the other. I sat down on the board showing what was there. I also showed what was there inside the rooms of the players, the confession booth, uh, also going to the production room and then going into the commentary room. This is a video that you must check it out and you cannot afford to miss. The night ended with a nice dinner along with Peter Leko and Sophie Leko. We had Levon Aronian. Uh, Guys, it's 5.26 a.m. in the morning. The morning began very early and this was the scene in the morning. Yeah, I had to edit the videos so I left early in the morning. Amruta slept late in the night. We are ensuring that you get the best coverage and so I didn't want to commentate from my room not to disturb Amruta and so I came here in the morning at 5.30 am. And I hope you are enjoying the coverage from Chess Base India.